I've been avoiding robot vacuums for the longest time because I have a lot of pets. This is one of them. And yeah, sure, they shed, but my biggest fear is that I'm gonna come home one day to a stinky mess spread throughout my home. But for folks like me who've been avoiding robot vacuums, 360 Smart Life has just introduced a new triple eye LiDAR vac that can easily detect obstacles. Now this robotic vac offers 3300 Pascal of suction, but is it better than Dyson, Eufy, or Xiaomi? We're gonna find out today. So join me, Matt Hall, and Turnip, with the Make Use Of Reviews team as we take a closer look at the new S10 by 360. The 360 S10 is a robotic, two-stage LiDAR vacuum with included mopping capability. Now this isn't 360 Smart Life's first robotic vacuum. The company's had a lot of success with both its S7 and S9 versions, as well as a ton of other IoT products. But the S10 is brand new for 2021. It features triple I LiDAR, which uses a SLAM algorithm that can detect hundreds of obstacles while it navigates through your house. Now, I do have to tell you that 360 Smart Life is sponsoring this video, so I would like to extend a thank you to the company for sending this unit along for testing. Now let's talk technical specifications. The S10 is 13.78 in diameter, both top and bottom, and 3.35 inches tall. It weighs about 8.48 pounds, the battery is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that is good for 72 watt hours. That's the vacuum itself. As for the dock, it's 8.66 inches in length, 6.02 in depth, and 3.94 in height. So in the box for the S10, you get the main robot unit, the charging dock, the power adapter and plugs, the mop bracket, the mop pad, the user manual, and a small cleaning tool. So how is the S10 different? The first thing you'll notice is on the top of the vac, there's no protrusion for the LiDAR. If you're familiar with 360's previous models, you'll know that this is a new design. The lack of LiDAR sensor on top of the unit allows it to easily fit under furniture. We have a giant wooden entertainment center in our living room and a matching coffee table, and the S10 fit perfectly under both. Now, LiDAR is available on a lot of robot vacs out there. But the S10's triple LiDAR gives the robot much more precise obstacle avoidance. As I said, obstacle avoidance was the biggest thing stopping me from looking into robot VAX. But with the triple LiDAR, the S10 sees the object and navigates around it. Unfortunately, I don't have an infrared camera to record the LiDAR, but it is something that I think is important for you to see. So I'm gonna put some images up that 360 Smart Life recorded of the triple LiDAR function. The S10 also features up to 3,300 Pascal of suction and the biggest water tank on any of 360's models. Why a water tank? Because not only does the S10 vacuum, it also mops. Now I'll demonstrate this capability in a bit, but first I wanted to talk a bit more about setup. A key area that I always try to evaluate whenever I test robotics like this is the ease of setup. With the S10, you unbox the unit, plug it in, download the 360 app and pair your S10. It's super simple, and for me it only took a few minutes. I really like that I didn't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get the device working. Now let's talk suction. One of the most important features, and probably the feature I like the most about the S10, is its four-stage suction. Personally, I have four pets in the house and they shed a lot. With the S10, I can adjust the amount of suction based on how much hair is embedded in my area rugs or on my floors. There are four different suction modes. Quiet mode is 600 Pascal, and this is the mode I find the best for operating the unit early in the morning. For me, I've found that running the S10 before the house wakes up is the best way to ensure that everything stays tidy. Standard mode is 1000 Pascal, and that's gonna be the default for most normal cleaning tasks. I've been using standard mode to tidy things up in the afternoon when the noise isn't gonna bother me or my wife while we're working. Powerful mode is a step above the standard mode and offers 1500 Pascal worth of suction. 
Now this is a pretty beefy mode and does great with low pile carpet and with rugs. In my house, we mainly have hardwood floors, but we do have a couple of low pile rugs throughout. And those rugs do tend to collect pet hair. So using powerful mode gets those rugs nice and clean. Now max mode is the last stage here and it's the strongest at the full 3300 Pascal. If you've got a lot of dirt and debris to deal with or you've spilled something, then max mode will pick that stuff up. Out of all the modes, max will be used the most battery, so it's not something you wanna use constantly if you wanna preserve battery life. Overall, I think the S10 suction is awesome, specifically for people who have pets. Now, there's also smart assistant capability with the S10. It offers voice control for Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Clova, and there are visual instructions that walk you through the setup process inside the 360 Smart app. Now, I like using the app just because I have more options, but it's nice to know that while you're sitting on the couch, if you just wanna shout at Alexa or Google Home to start cleaning, you can do so. Alexa. Start the S10. It's almost too easy to be lazy in this case. The S10 also allows you to set no-go zones if you don't want the robot to clean a specific area of your home. In my house, for example, I have two sets of stairs. I don't want my expensive robot vacuum anywhere near those stairs for obvious reasons, so I set up no-go zones in those areas. Now speaking of stairs, the S10 will also support up to 10 floors in the app. I don't have 10 floors in my house, but if you do and you would like to adopt a product reviewer, then I might know someone who might be interested. Now these zones are pretty easy to set up in the app, and you can have more than one if you have multiple areas that you want to avoid. But I should also note that the S10 can accurately detect things like stairs. It uses edge detection and six anti-drop sensors to keep this bad boy from taking an expensive tumble. These no-go zones are also great if you have things like bowls of water or cables lying around. Now I found that the robot would bump into the dog's water bowl and spill it a bit, so I just set up a zone around the water bowl area and the S10 avoided it. So let's talk a little bit about mopping. The S10 has a three-stage mop function built in that uses high, medium, and low spray volumes based on the depth of clean that you need. 360 states that this size tank can mop up to 2153 square foot without needing to be refilled. And based on my testing, I would say that figure is pretty close. The tank on this unit is 520 ml, which is around double the capacity of some of the other cleaners on the market. And the S10 has a 15% larger mop pad than the previous S9 model. Additionally, the S10 can adjust water volume based on what's on the floor. In other words, if you set the S10 to auto water control, then the robot will determine how dirty the floor is and adjust the amount of water needed to clean it. You don't have to use the mopping function if you only want a vacuum. But for me, using both the vacuum and the mop function has kept my floors pretty clean for the last week or so. The mopping function can also automatically avoid carpet in the mopping mode. This automatic carpet detection actually increases the suction power of the vacuum by one level when carpet is detected, as long as this feature is turned on in the app. It does this via an ultrasonic sensor built into the undercarriage of the unit. There are also 18 smart cleaning modes for the S10. You can clean specific areas, clean the entire house twice, customize a plan, deep clean a specific area, auto divide areas, name individual rooms, and much more. An example of this customizable cleaning, my wife works in her office the majority of the day, and she pretty much leaves her office door open. But if I wanna run the vacuum and not disturb her, I can set a specific cleaning plan to leave her office out of the clean. Now later, when she's done with work for the day, I can send the S10 into that room specifically and have it just work on that space without having to clean the rest of the house. Let's talk a little bit about the dustbin. The S10 houses a 500 milliliter dustbin, and to empty it, you just remove the bin and press the green button. There's a little door on the bottom of the bin that will flip open and the dust will just fall out. Now 360 says you can get about two weeks out of this dustbin, but for me and maybe other pet owners, I think this is a little optimistic. It's probably best to empty the dustbin after every use or maybe every few uses. There's also a washable mesh filter on top that'll help avoid dust and hair clogging up the bin. As for the build quality, the unit is pretty stout as robot vacuum cleaners go. So, while the unit is primarily made of plastic, it doesn't feel cheap. Instead, it feels heavy enough to know that the unit means business. Let's talk a little bit about the auto mapping function with the S10 and 360's app. Now, one of the best features of any robotic vacuum is gonna be the app control, and the S10 has 
a fantastic app for that purpose. With it, you can automatically map 2D and 3D models of your living space. The LiDAR comes in clutch here because it allows the S10 to create a map of your space when you first run the unit. So essentially, you just hit the clean button once the unit's fully charged and then let it do its thing. For me, the unit automatically detected all of my furniture, including chairs and desks in each individual room. So now we're on to the fun part, testing the unit. Now I sectioned off an area of my living room and tried to use some of the features. First was obstacle avoidance. I used a few dog toys to see how the unit navigated around each one and then around multiples. Next, I wanted to test the suction capability. So I set up a few piles of rice, pine nuts, nuts and bolts, fruity pebbles, and even some kosher salt and dumped it on the floor. Then I had the S10 clean the area. Now I made sure to do a couple of passes just to get it as clean as possible. And then I checked the bin to see how much stuff had actually gotten picked up. The results of this test were pretty promising and the S10 got all of the stuff off the floor without any kind of issue. Now, I should note here that this did take a couple of passes or cleanings to get all the stuff up. This isn't a big issue. Just understand the vacuum follows a specific path based on the area you're cleaning. So if there's stuff in the area that you're not cleaning or stuff around the edges, sometimes it will take a couple of passes. This is true for any robotic vacuum you're gonna encounter. I also wanted to test the mopping performance. So I spilled some ketchup on the floor and engaged the mop function. As you can see, the S10 did a decent job of mopping up the spill, though it might need a couple of passes if you've got a decent sized mess on your hands. You might also want to skip the robotic mop if things are really messy and just use the S10 for spot cleaning or maintenance cleaning. Finally, I was a little wary of letting this robot vac get real close to the stairs to test the anti-drop sensors, but I'm here to test things so you folks can see what you're getting into. So here we go. So as you can see, the S10 accurately detected the stairs and stayed away from them. This makes me feel a little more comfortable just leaving the robot at home or letting it do its thing while I'm not around. So what makes the S10 an awesome buy? I have to say, I think the S10 is a great vacuum and mop combo. Personally, I like the ease of use and I really like that I can just indulge my laziness rather than having to worry about sweeping a mop in. Granted, you do have to do a little bit because the S10 isn't going to get every tiny corner. But for general maintenance cleaning, this thing is fantastic. I also love that you can set no-go zones, which means I won't have to worry about my expensive robot vac winding up at the bottom of the stairs and a bunch of broken pieces. Of course, the anti-drop sensors do add a little bit of a feeling of security with this, and in testing them, they function pretty well. Additionally, having a robotic vac that can get underneath my furniture is great. Like I said, I'm kind of lazy, so I don't want to go crawling around with a broom and a mop to try and clean these areas. I just want the robot to do all my dirty work. By far, the most important feature to me is the LiDAR object detection. As I said at the beginning of this review, I've been holding off into looking into robotic vacuums because I didn't want to babysit a device. With the S10, I feel confident that even if my pets have an accident, I won't come home to a huge mess on my floors. To me, that's worth the cost of this device alone. So what's not to love? Just to be fair, I do need to point out a couple of the S10's limitations that I've discovered during the time I've been using it. Now keep in mind, these are not deal breakers, but they are things that I think anybody who's interested in this vacuum should know before they dive in. Now first, it does tend to burn through charge when you're using it on higher suction levels. I'm okay with that because even at the max level, the S10 was able to clean my entire downstairs with a single charge. Now after it was done, I took the unit upstairs with a charging station. I let it charge up to 100% again before I ran the vacuum. Battery life may not be an issue because you can always wait a bit before continuing to clean. But if you have an exceptionally large home with multiple levels, you might get frustrated if you try to vacuum all the levels one after another. I only have two levels in my home, so it's really simple enough for me to just wait until the unit's fully charged uh, before I go take it on the second floor. Finally, and I should state this is probably gonna vary based on personal needs, but the bin on the S10 did get pretty full after only one or two days of cleaning. Now, this may change as I run the robot more often because usually those first cleanings are always more inundated with pet hair and dust and all that kind of fun stuff. This is just my experience. 
I have four pets, including two medium hair cats and a lab boxer mix with a double coat. So I think my house is more prone to hair and dust than the average home. Now, can you repair the S10 robotic vacuum? There are a few components here which can be replaced or serviced by the end users. The brushes on the unit allow for easy removal and maintenance, and if you have a problem, I can't really see a scenario where you wouldn't be able to replace them by yourself. The same is true for the water tank, the mop pad, the bracket, all the dust bin components. Um, theoretically, all those things could be replaced if you ran into an issue. I think where I would draw the line would be the internal components, like the LiDAR sensors, the bumper portions of the unit, things like that. I think if you have a problem with those, it might be best to send the unit back to 360 for repair or replacement. The warranty on this unit is one year, so if you do have an issue, I wouldn't hesitate to reach out. So should you buy the S10 from 360 Smart Life? I really like this vacuum. Even my wife has commented on how much cleaner the house feels after having the floors vacuumed and mopped on a daily basis. I think that if you're in the market for a robotic vacuum cleaner, then the S10 is a really nice unit. Now, I do wish it had a self-emptying bin, but I'm not docking any points for that. If 360 wanted to add that functionality, I think this vac would be absolutely incredible. I'd also like to see a HEPA filter, but that's just wishful thinking items on my end. Overall, I think the S10 is an exceptional choice for those who want to get into the realm of robotic cleaners. For people who have one or more pets, this vac is gonna give you back a ton of time. Just another example, I used to sweep the house every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Each time it took about five to 10 minutes, which doesn't seem like a lot of time, but 10 minutes per day over a month time period is roughly five hours that I can now just tell the S10 to take care of for me while I do other things. Currently, the S10 by 360 Smart Life is in the production phase, but it is getting ready to ship very soon. If you're interested in this unit after seeing this review, I will invite you to check out 360 Smart Life's Indiegogo campaign for early bird pricing and some extra goodies. I'll include those links in the full review for this unit, which if you're seeing this video, the full review should be up on makeuseof.com. So that concludes my review of the S10 Robotic Vacuum by 360. If you found this review helpful, then you know what to do, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to start a conversation, come find me over on Twitter. For Make Use Of, my name is Matt Hall. Thank you for sticking around today. I appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next one.